What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbyist. After several teases in previous videos, it is finally here. My review of the latest concept series from Q Acoustics. I've got the Concept 50 floor standing speaker, the Concept 30 bookshelf or stand mount speaker, the Concept 90 center channel, and the QB12, a 12 inch sealed subwoofer. A nice 5.1 configuration, all from Q Acoustics. They sent them to me for review and I got a chance to test them here. Now I'm gonna answer the first big question right here. What makes this lineup so special? Well, what Q Acoustics has done is they have taken technology from their flagship Concept 500 and Concept 300 speakers and they have brought them down to this lineup that is actually a bit more affordable than those particular speakers. So for those of us who can't quite afford those speakers, now we have an option right here. And I've listened to these speakers with both music and movies and I want to talk about that in this video along with the technology. So this video may be a little bit longer than some of my other videos, but there are chapter markers so you can skip around to the chapter that you find most important, but honestly, I think you should just watch the whole thing through and through, but let's get to it. So the first thing I wanna talk about in this video is some of the technology that Q Acoustics has packed into this new concept line of speakers. I'm not gonna talk about the QB12 just yet, mainly because I've already done a video on it and I'll put a link in the card up above, or you can check that link out in the description below. But I wanna focus on these new speakers because I think the technology is cool, but also because I compared this Concept 30 bookshelf speaker to another bookshelf speaker in the Q Acoustics line, the 3030i. And I'll talk about it more in the sound quality section, but suffice it to say, I found that this sounds better than that 3030i, and I think that 3030i sounds good. I think this is cleaner, a bit more transparent, it's got a better stereo image, and it's more detailed. I just, I like the way this sounds. So let's just put that out there. And I think it's because of some of the technology. Now, one of the first things that Q Acoustics does with both the 3000i line and also this line is that they include their P2P or point to point bracing technology. And what that is, is this little beams inside the cabinet that are strategically placed to increase cabinet rigidity while reducing the amount of low frequency vibration and noise that's being transferred to the different panels inside the cabinet. Now, to address higher frequency noise and vibrations, Q Acoustics has developed a technology that they call Gel Core. This is a non-setting gel that is sandwiched in between the inner cabinet and outer cabinet of each speaker. So as noise and vibrations resonate from the inner cabinet to the outer cabinet, it is reduced by this gel core layer before it reaches the outer cabinet. Now this is a concept series only feature. And this particular line has a single layer of gel core, while the Concept 500 and 300 have a dual layer of gel core. Now there are a few other features that I wanna point out here. First of all, all of the speakers from the 30 to the 90 to the Concept 50 have dual binding posts. So you can buy wire or buy amp them so you can have a cleaner signal path to your high frequency and your low frequency. Now, personally, I find that I can hear difference with buy amping, but not so much with buy wiring, but you can try it out for yourself if you so desire. Also, the 90 and the 30 have this base on it, this isolation base. And what this is, is this two plates with some springs in between it. And what that does is it allows the speaker to be isolated from its surroundings. So vibrations from the cabinet don't transfer to the table or the stand that they're sitting on. And the vibrations, any vibrations from the table or stand don't translate into the speaker. So that's really cool. Also attached to this plate on the inside is the crossover. And Q Acoustics says they put the crossover here so that it is moved away from any electromagnetic interference from the drivers. And all of the tweeters are hermetically sealed and mechanically isolated from the front baffle to give you a cleaner sound. And finally, the Concept 50. It has the Hemholtz pressure equalizers inside the cabinet, and those are supposed to reduce any internal pressure gradients. So again, cleaner signal. So overall, these speakers have a ton of technologies built into them. All right, now let's move on and talk sound quality because obviously that is why you buy speakers like these. And one of the first questions I wanted to answer was, does this lineup have that Q acoustic sound that I 
like, right, that I enjoy from Q Acoustic speakers. And so I decided to compare the Concept 30 to a pair of 3030i's that I have on loan from Q Acoustics. I compared those two because I have the 3030i and because honestly, that is probably one of the best sounding speakers in that 3000i lineup because it's got a little bit better bass than the 3020i, it's got a nice mid range and it's got a nice tweeter sound. Now the 3020i I think is probably the best value because it's a little bit less expensive, but you will need to add a little bit more subwoofer with it uh, compared to the 3030i. So I like the 3030i, but I did the comparison and I recorded an audio sample. So let's listen to the audio sample so you can hear how the Concept 30 compares to the 3030i. Okay, so hopefully you heard those audio samples and you noticed that those speakers are basically voice the same. They sound the same for the most part, but I chose that particular audio sample because there is a, what I would consider a pretty significant difference between the speakers, specifically with that tweeter performance. With the 3030i, the tweeter sounds a little bit brighter, a little bit crisper compared to the Concept 30. The Concept 30 is a little bit smoother, a little bit richer, and it's not as quote unquote bright. And honestly, I think it's a cleaner sound. And not only did I notice this, but I asked my wife to listen to the two pairs of speakers together or back and forth, and she noticed the same thing too, pretty much right off the bat. So this isn't something that you have to, you know, have critical listening ears to hear. You're going to notice it between the two. Now, are those differences because of the you know gel core cabinet and the isolation design that they have with the tweeter maybe maybe that's what it is but honestly i do think that the tweeter in the concept uh 30 line does sound better than that 3000 i line because one of the things that i noticed when i compared all of the speakers in that 3000 i line is that they have the same tweeter performance because they use the same tweeter as far as the mid-range and even the bass performance is concerned, they are much closer in performance. I think they both give you a nice natural sound with a lot of detail. Although I do think that the Concept 30 is just a little bit, I mean, a hair smoother compared to the 3030i. Now, another thing that I did notice was that the Concept 30 does seem to be a little bit better damped than the 3030i in the mid-range and even a little bit in the bass. And I noticed that again, with the same audio sample you heard, the beginning of that song, a pianist is playing and as they're playing, the the notes are being struck on the piano, the uh, keys are then hitting the dampers and there's sort of a knocking sound. And I noticed that it's just a little bit tighter sound with the Concept 30 compared to the 3030i when the, that knocking sound occurs. In fact, let me play an audio sample so you can hear that for yourself. All right, so hopefully you heard that with that knocking sound, thump, thump, thump. Um, it's just a little bit tighter with the Concept 30 compared to the 3030i. And again, I think that's just because the cabinets are just a little bit better damped. But overall, I think the Concept 30 does have that same Q acoustics sound. Now, I did talk a little bit about the bass, and I will say that uh, the 3030i does play a little bit deeper than the Concept 30, but you do get a nice detailed presentation from both. Now, moving on, I did compare the Concept 30 to the Concept 50 that I have here because I wanted to make sure that these sound basically the same, and the good news is they do. But there are some differences that you're gonna notice if you were to listen to these back to back like I did with the same amplification source. And the first thing that you're going to notice is that the Concept 90, or excuse me, the Concept 50 rather, is just a little bit louder than the Concept 30. And that's because the Concept 50 is just a little bit more efficient. It's 
it's like uh, 90, 91 dB efficient, whereas the Concept 30 is like 87 dB efficient. So that plus three dB is noticeable at your main listening position. But as far as the tweeter performance and the mid-range performance, they are basically the same. You have the same amount of dynamics, the same amount of clarity, the same amount of just overall voice naturalness, smoothness, all of that, the detail is basically the same between the two speakers. Now, as far as bass performance is concerned, again, they are pretty identical for the most part, but the Concept 50 does play deeper than the Concept 30 plays. The Concept 30 will play down to about 40 hertz and you can still hear it, but below 40 hertz, it drops off of a cliff. Whereas the Concept 50 will play uh, down to 30 hertz and between 30 hertz and 40 hertz, the Concept 50 drops about 6 dB, so you can still hear it. But below 30 hertz, let's say between 20 and 30 hertz on the Concept 50, it drops off like 20 dB. So basically it doesn't play below 30 hertz. But again, they both give you a nice detailed presentation and they are voiced nearly identical. So it sounds great regardless of if you're listening to the Concept 30 or the Concept 50. All right, now I wanna move on and talk about movies with this particular setup, because I wanna talk about the QB12. I wanna talk about this center channel, the Concept 90, and how well it does. And basically, let's just say it like this. I had a fun time watching movies with this particular setup because it is dynamic and you have a nice, clear, detailed presentation regardless of what you're watching. One of the first things that I did after I set these up was I ran my room calibration software. I've got a version of Odyssey running on my uh, Denon AVR-X4400H, which I was using as my surround processor, and I'm running the Monoprice Monolith 7 channel amplifier as my amplification. It uh, can output up to 200 watts per channel, all channel driven, so plenty of power to drive all the speakers in this 5.1 configuration. I was using the Concept 50s as my front left and right, the 30s as the surround, and obviously the 90 as the center channel. After I ran that uh, calibration software, I noticed that the center channel was about 3 dB lower than the front left and front right. And so I was a little bit concerned that I wasn't gonna be able to hear dialogue. And so one of the first movies I tested was Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, this is the latest Jurassic Park movie and it has a blistering DTS soundtrack. Um, Honestly, listen to this at reference level is a bit too loud. So I really didn't do too much of that. I was at like, you know, minus 15, minus 20 dB uh, when I was listening. And I have to say that the dialogue was just fine coming out of the center channel. It was even better than just fine. If it was down, let's say minus five or even minus six dB compared to the front left and right, I still would have been able to hear the dialogue. Would it have been as coherent? Maybe not, you know, when you pan from left to right, it may not have been as coherent, but I would have still been able to hear the dialogue. The only time you aren't able to hear dialogue from the center channel is when it is intentionally unintelligible when you know that is a part of the sound design of the movie so the dialogue from this is crystal clean and clear and pans from left to right really really work you don't really lose any coherence at all when you're panning from left to right so i really do enjoy having this setup having the 50 and the 90 as my front sound stage so if that's what you're thinking about i definitely recommend it now, moving into the surrounds and using the 30s as the surround speakers is a nice seamless presentation because again, it's basically the same speaker as the Concept 50. I didn't notice any difference as it moved from the front to the side surrounds. And for me, I actually have the Concept 30 is just a little bit behind my ear position. So when there was something that was supposed to be going on behind me, like a dinosaur coming up from behind in Jurassic World Dimension or something like that, it actually sounded like I had speakers behind me. Was it the exact same as dedicated speakers back there? No, but it was pretty close. I have to say that these have a nice wide soundstage regardless of what you're listening to. I like that, it sounds great. So I pretty much recommend these as surround speakers. If you're gonna use these as surrounds and have a 5.1 setup, I think the Concept 30s work great as surround speakers. Okay, now let's move on and talk about bass and the QB12 performance. And I have to say, the QB12 blends very, very nicely with these speakers because they're basically voiced all together. So it blends incredibly well. It's a sealed subwoofer, so it has the fast transients and gives you that level of detail that you expect from a sealed subwoofer, whether you're listening to music or watching movies but it's not vented so it doesn't play as deep as a vented counterpart would you're not gonna get subsonic bass it'll play down you know 25 Hertz and you'll get audible 20 but you know it's it's not gonna be that deep deep bass out of a vented sub so I think it does well with this particular setup the only thing that I noticed was that when listening at reference level and you if you have a big explosion let's say um, the Dark Knight where the Joker is uh, blowing up the hospital and that's just a really big explosion I didn't 
notice it was just a little bit of bass distortion in there, just a little bit at reference level. So at really high volumes, really big explosions, it could use maybe a little bit more damping or something like that, just to give it just a little bit cleaner sound. But it's nothing that honestly I would worry about. It's like, you really gotta be listening for it and you've really gotta be playing loud to hear it, but it is something that I noticed. One other thing I wanted to test was the height effects in movies, you know, Dolby Atmos DTSX, where you have planes flying overhead or rain dropping on your head or whatever it is when you have those Atmos speakers running. And like I said, I've got a 5.1 set up here, so I wasn't expecting it to be exactly the same as having dedicated speakers, but I wanted to try it anyway. And I compared the Concept 50 to my own Eclipse RP260 which is a floor standing speaker. And what I found was that the Eclipse RP260F did a better job simulating that height experience compared to the Concept 50. With the Concept 50, it sounded like it was a little bit more ground level. Whereas when I closed my eyes, uh, the RP260F just had a bit more height effect. So I wish they did a better job with that. But the good news is, although I, as far as I know, they don't sell necessarily dedicated Atmos speakers, you can get a wall mount for the Concept 30 and actually angle it down towards your listening position if you wanna do that. So you can get an Atmos setup even with <laughs> this particular setup that I have here. But like I said, just out of the box in a 5.1 or 7.1 configuration, I do wish it had just a bit more height to the image. Editor Cody here. I was just finishing up my edit of this video. And in the next section, I try to give just a little bit of buying advice. You know, should you buy these 3000i, Concept 20s? But I did not talk about the Concept 300s or 500s at all. That's the flagship speakers this line is kind of derived from. And first of all, I apologize for that, but um, I'll talk about it just a little bit here. First of all, do I think that the Concept 500s and 300s are better than these speakers? Yes mainly because they look better in my opinion. I think they have a higher gloss surface finish. They've got that two-tone look that looks really good. Um, I just think they look better than these. But sonically, do they sound better? Honestly, I don't know. And I say that because I do not have those speakers here to test against these speakers. These speakers and those speakers do share a lot of technologies, like I said earlier, but one feature that uh, these speakers don't have that those do have is these have a single layer of gel core whereas those have a dual layer of gel core does that make a difference in the mid-range and the tweeter performance of the speaker i don't know i didn't test them back to back i think the differences would be subtle but i did not test them back to back also, I would love to get my wife to sit down and listen to them back to back to see if she noticed the difference as well. So I don't want to say, okay, those are absolutely better and these are, mm, or, you know, they're the same or whatever, because again, I did not get a chance to test them back to back. So hopefully you understand that. Let's move on and finish this video. So as you can tell, I really enjoyed listening to music and watching movies on this particular setup. And some were going to say, well, you know, which one is it better for? Is it better for music or is it better for movies? And honestly, after I finished, you know, kind of doing my music testing, I was like, I think these lean towards music. That's kind of where I was thinking. But then once I started listening to movies and watching movies with this, I was like, wow, this is really good with movies too. So I think in my opinion, this is probably, I don't know, 55, 45, where it leans just a little bit more music than movies. But honestly you can do either one with this particular setup i think they do a great job now as far as upgrading from the 3000 i line i would say yes this is a nice upgrade from the 3000 i line and i like it because it's not as expensive as the concept 300 or the concept 500 so you get a you know much more reasonable price and you get a really good upgrade so i like that now as far as the concept 20 i have a pair of concept 20s here and i did compare them to the concept 30s here now according to q acoustics it's not really a replacement for that line so they're still selling uh, the concept 20 but I did do the test and I have to say that in the mid range and in the base portion of it um, there wasn't like a huge like noticeable like wow wow this is noticeably different between the concept 20 and the concept 30 but uh, as far as trouble is concerned I actually have a bad tweeter on my con or one of my tweeters is bad on the concept 20 so I really don't want to comment too much on how that sounded because it did sound different but it's also because I had a bad tweeter or I have a bad tweeter I should say it like that um, so I'm not gonna say you should upgrade to the con uh, from the Concept 20 to this particular lineup. I think you can, you know, if you want to, definitely go ahead. But I'm not gonna say it's a noticeable upgrade one way or the other because I know with my system it's just a little bit wonky. But I do think it is a pretty big upgrade from that 3000i line. Now, anybody else that's coming to this uh, particular lineup, you're wondering, is this good? And I would say yes. 
Yes, it really is. It is great. And honestly, I think that the Concept 30 is a great value. Um, the Concept 50 is good. Don't get me wrong. It is good. But at $12.99, the Concept 30 is a great value. Now, they do sell these FX 75 stands that I have this on um, for an additional price. And so you can purchase those. But the good news is these Concept 30s, you can put them on a generic stand and they work just fine as well. It might not look as good as the FS FS 75 stands, but it will definitely work. So I think this is a really good value, but the overall system, the Concept 90, the Concept 50, the Concept 30, the QB12, it's a great setup, and I think you would enjoy both movies and music with it. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section, and I will try to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, hit that like, and subscribe button. I'll talk to you next time.